guys, Shrek Tech here. It's been two weeks since I uploaded my last video, but I'm back into it. I'm still using the OnePlus 8T right now, and this is gonna be my full review with the OnePlus 8T. So the OnePlus 8T is positioned in a way where it's kind of hard to recommend, but at the same time, it is a great phone. But the reason why I'm saying it's a lot harder to recommend is because OnePlus is still trying to get his name here in the United States, where it's not that popular like Apple or Samsung. By me saying that they priced this at 750. So there are other phone companies that release phones that are a lot cheaper than this and may offer a little bit more for a cheaper price or they offer around the same thing for a cheaper price. So for example, they released the Galaxy S20 FE not too long ago and that one goes for 699. They released the Google Pixel 5 and that one goes for 699 as well. And they're gonna release the iPhone mini soon, which is probably gonna be the same price at $699. And the OnePlus 8T is positioned at $750. Before I get started into the review, this phone is great. I'm not saying it's bad at all. From my experience, I love OnePlus. I like it better. I prefer it better than Samsung just because of the software and because the way the whole phone is optimized. That's one of the reasons why I've always chose OnePlus over Samsung. Even though Samsung do have better cameras at the end of the day, but other than that, they're basically very, very similar. But the OnePlus 8T just has way better software. Uh, if you guys have never experienced a OnePlus phone before, and if you guys do have a Samsung phone, I would suggest you guys just jumping over to the OnePlus area, just, just to try it out one time. And yes, we have to see the optimizations you could do to your home screen, you could change a couple of things that you can't really do on one UI. So without further ado, let's get started. So the one I have here is the OnePlus 8T that comes with the Snapdragon 865, 12 gigabytes of RAM with 256 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 storage and a 4,500 milliamp battery. So even just looking at those specs, you already know this phone is gonna be pretty fast, it's gonna be pretty reliable. It's gonna give you the confidence you need if you are thinking about keeping this phone for a few years. I mean, thinking about 12 gigabytes of RAM is pretty much overkill for most people, but you just have that peace in mind that if you are gonna keep this phone for a very long time, this phone will handle years to come to it. So the screen that you're getting here is the 6.55 inch, 120 hertz fluid AMOLED display. Now, they went up from the 90 hertz that was on the OnePlus 8 and basically went equivalent to the one on the OnePlus 8 Pro. It's 120 hertz, 1080p display. You're not getting the Quad HD display like you're getting on the 8 Pro, but you're not losing that much. It's still a beautiful screen. It's big. It has a hole punch display on the left side that doesn't seem to bother me too much. I was a little iffy going into buying a phone with the hole punch display, but over time you do kind of get used to it and it's not really in the way just because it's on the top left side. So when I do watch videos, most of the time my hands kind of gonna be covering it, but even then it's gonna be in the bottom left corner the way I watch videos, so it's not gonna really be a bother to me personally. Now, another thing that you're getting here, it is a flat screen. Now, I know a lot of people don't like curved displays. Me, myself, I think I'm more in the middle. I think now that I'm using a flat screen, I kind of do miss a curved display. At times when you do look at the curved display, it does make the phone look a lot, lot nicer than just a flat display, but you don't get those accidental touches like you do on the curved display. On this one, you're getting a flat display, which is for me, a thumbs up, I like that. And the bezels around the phone are really, really small as well. And even with the 120 hertz display, this phone flies. Now with this one, you're getting 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. Now, equipped with the 12 gigs of RAM with Android 11, Oxygen OS 11 on top of that, this phone flies, I'm telling you right now. And the way they optimize their phones, everything just seems very, very snappy. Something that I've seen from the OnePlus 7 Pro that I used to have, like I said, these phones are very, very optimized accordingly. So I think when it comes to usage experience, this phone nails it. Now, I will say that the OnePlus 7 Pro that I used to have does have a better screen just because it is a quad HD display. But for me personally, I can't, really tell between 90 hertz and 120 hertz and that's just me personally i know there's a lot of people on youtube that say you do see a difference between 90 and 120 but i don't think there's such a big jump there i think the big jump is between 60 and 90 if you ever experience any high refresh rate then you will know what i'm talking about apple fans i know none of you guys really know about refresh rates if you guys have always been with apple now, this year they didn't really go with 120 hertz or 90 hertz, they just went with 5G, that's their choice. But if you've never experienced high refresh rate and 
you go down to 60 hertz you notice it right away right away when you go from 90 to 120 it isn't that drastic but when you do go from 60 to 90 that is a big jump you'll notice it right right away now one of the things that i know every oneplus fan has been looking forward to is the aod which is the always on display now mainly every manufacturer samsung lg already has their own always on display so oneplus was literally the last one to add it on to their phones but finally this year they finally added it on only to the phones that you buy unlocked so if you buy the oneplus at on t-mobile store it's not coming with the always on display i don't know why maybe it's some miscommunication going on there between oneplus and t-mobile but as of right now my current version from t-mobile does not come with always on display i tried looking it up on the internet and it is saying that a lot of people are receiving these phones from t-mobile without the always on display so maybe with another feature update they would include it but as of right now it is a bummer because i was kind of looking forward to that i know there is a lot of people that were looking forward to that as well on these oneplus phones but as of right now if you buy the t-mobile version you're not going to get the always on display for the oneplus at the finger breeze scanner has always been the same it's still pretty fast pretty reliable uh, it's not the safest out there but it is fast it does get a job done something that i really like something that they've pretty much mastered it's really really quick i don't think it really fails that much it's an optical reader like i said it's not the safest out there but it gets the job done and i like it very much so far so same thing for the face recognition it's the same thing as every year it's been really really fast and really reliable it's actually really really fast if you ask me it's not the safest out there it's not as secure as face id but for the average consumer it should satisfy your needs it's actually really really fast you could put it in different directions and it'll still catch your face and it'll open it really, really fast. It gives the option if you want it to open right away once it recognizes your face or if you want to open it up with a swipe up and from there you'll go. But I like it without having to swipe up. It just opens up on its own and it feels a lot faster just like that. So if you're into that, it also includes that in this phone. So on this phone, they're still keeping the alert slider on the right side of the phone. Something that I really, really like from the OnePlus phones, as of right now, I don't see any other company doing this besides Apple. Apple has one on the side that just puts it on silent or on loud, whereas this one gives you three options. It puts it on silent, vibration, and loud. So it gives you, like I said, three options. Something that's very convenient to, to most people, very convenient to me just because I know when I used to have my Samsung phone, I'm not saying that it's a horrible thing if you don't have it, but it was just annoying just toggling this down and then putting it on vibrate from this menu so i think it's just so much easier when even when you have it off you could just slide it up and down and i'll let you know on the screen if you have it on which one so like i said that's something that i've always liked now for the battery i think this is where they did good as well so this phone comes with a 4500 milliamp battery equipped with 65 warp charge now it does not come with wireless charging but I am not going to be complaining about that just because the charging on this phone is super quick. It's not even necessary for you to have uh, wireless charging just because wireless charging is very slow and it's going to take all night to charge your phone, which is what I don't usually do. I don't charge my phone overnight. Usually I charge it before work. And now with the 65 warp charge, that's exactly what I do every day. I go to sleep with the phone usually like at 20, 15 percent around there. I wake up. Before I go to work, I usually have around 40, 40 minutes to get ready. So usually during that time when I'm getting ready, I charge it for 35 minutes and I let it go up to 100% and I'm good to go. But even then, if I don't charge it to 100, with 20 minutes, you'll get like 70%. At the end of the day, that's why I'm saying that the wireless charging does not bother me. It might bother other people just because there is phones out there that are selling for a lower price. That's including wireless charging. At the end of the day, it comes to your personal experience. But for me, the Warp Charge 65 has been amazing. And because Besides that, the phone battery itself is actually really, really good. So like I said, you're getting a 4,500 milliamp battery. It is a big screen at 6.55 inch with 120 hertz. But at the overtime, just give it like two weeks and you'll see that the phone starts to realize what type of patterns you use, how you use the phone, what apps you open a lot, what apps you like leaving in the background. So the phone gets to know the way you use your phone. So over time, the phone does increase in battery life. So for me, I'm getting around six, six and a half hours. That for me, that's perfect. I am sometimes a heavy user, depending what I'm doing that day. I'm pretty sure most people won't kill this phone in a day. At the end of the day, I'm getting six, six and a half hours of phone usage. And I think that's okay in my book. Now for the cameras, something that OnePlus has always struggled with, 
Now, when I say struggle, I'm just saying when it comes to image processing. So they do have the hardware. They have a 48 megapixel sensor in there. They have a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera. And they have two other cameras that are kind of unnecessary. That's something that does kind of bother me sometimes just because they're wasting money on two lenses that they know most people won't use. So it would just be more convenient and more useful if they added that money into their main sensor. So if you're gonna be shooting from the main lens, you're gonna get uh, pretty good pictures. The pictures you're gonna get out of it are very punchy, kind of Samsung-like. But like I said, it's your taste. For me, they come out pretty nice, especially if you get the sensor and a lot of light. If you go out there on a sunny day in a park, you're really, really gonna get nice photos. So the second one is the ultra wide camera, and that comes really, really in handy. I do notice the color shifting between the main sensor and the ultra wide sensor is something that they've always struggled with. There's phones out there like the iPhone that pretty much perfected it where when you switch between lenses you don't see no color shifting but in this one you do see a little bit color shifting it might not bother you the average consumer but for me I do notice it when I take photos I take a lot of photos of everything so I do notice that it does come with a two time zoom so it's not going to be a telephoto this time around basically it's just going to be grabbing the main sensor and cropping it two times in at the end of the day it's not a bad thing because there are telephoto sensors out there that do produce bad quality just because they're low on megapixels or their processing is not that great so for this one there's going to be no color shifting between the main sensor and a two times zoom so the colors are going to be exactly the same so for me that's a okay in my book so the third lens is going to be a macro mode so the macro mode is more of a gimmick it's more of a fun thing for you to show off to your friends it's not something that I'm really going to be using just because you could get close enough using the main sensor besides the macro mode because if you do notice you're going to get better quality off the main sensor. The macro mode is only a 5 megapixel so like I said it is going to get up close to the subject where you're trying to take. It is going to get really close but the detail is going to be kind of off. And the fourth sensor is just to shoot monochrome photos. So basically it's going to give you black and white photos. If you're into that cool, me personally once again. I'm not gonna be using it macro mode I'm gonna be using it just a little bit here and there but not really the ultra wide I will be using it and the main sensor obviously I will be using it also thinking about the oneplus 8t is that it does feel like a flagship so when you do look at it it has a glass back gorilla glass 5 all around it has nice rails the color is beautiful on it so when you do look at it from a distance it does look like a premium $1,000 phone but it's only at 750 which is something that a lot of people will get confused and so far, I do, I do like the phone. The phone does feel nice. It, I don't think it's that heavy like I thought it was going to be. I think it's like 189 grams. It's not that heavy. The iPhone SE that I had, I think it was 148 grams. So that phone is really, really small. So obviously, you're expecting it to be very, very light. But this one at 188 grams, 89 grams, it's very good. It feels good in the hands. I don't think you're really going to struggle using this phone one-handed. One thing that I didn't notice about the OnePlus 8T is that sometimes when I'm trying to watch... A YouTube video using the whole screen it does not let me pinch in on top of it is saying that the phone is pinched into this max but it's actually not even moving it's showing the animation where it's actually trying to expand but actually just stays the same throughout the videos so the only way to fix this is if you just close the whole YouTube app and you just reopen it and go watch the video again and from there I'll start working but from what I've seen I don't know if I'm the only one getting this issue. That's something that I've been experiencing. Usually like around 20, 30% of the time that happens, but for the most part, it doesn't happen. But hopefully they do fix that with a future update. So at the end of the day, I do like this phone a lot. I love the screen, the 120 Hertz. I love the charging on it. I love the software on it. It's probably one of my favorite things. Software is, plays a big role when I buy a OnePlus phone. I don't get it just because it has the best charging or whatever. It feels good in the hands. The cameras are decent. They're not bad. But just like I said in the beginning of the video, it is hard to recommend this phone just because there is a lot of people, especially here in the States where they've never heard of a OnePlus phone before. So most of the time people just go to Apple, Samsung, Apple, Samsung. And that's just a story at the end of the day. Most people, that's what they choose because that's just what they know or that's just what their friends have or their family have. So I'm not saying that those phones are bad. They know how to market them. They've been around the game for so long that they do have their own name here in the States. But as a OnePlus company, basically they're still a baby. They are very popular in India or around the world besides here. But at the end of the day, like I said, it's hard to recommend this phone just because there are other phones out there that are 50 bucks cheaper and you're getting a couple more things like an IP rating or wireless charging or a better set of cameras. So that's just my opinion. 
I'm still gonna stick with it just because I know what I'm getting myself into every time I buy a OnePlus phone. And at the end of the day, I'm, I'm gonna be happy with the purchase that I made. So, that's been it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to my channel. Plenty of content coming soon. Take care, and I'll see you guys next time.